I wrote down a correction to last time where I was arguing for some equality but somehow failed to draw the conclusion that is about these blow-ups but we won't see many blow-ups today. Today I am talking about a subject that is independent but that actually will not be used later in my lectures for example when I will attempt to prove solution of this decreed the multiplicative group of a number field. But I'm talking about the real just now. So we have a field K, a number field, finite over Q, and it has a ring of integers, and we want to find it. And yesterday I told you that from a polynomial time point of view, that is pretty much an impossible problem. That doesn't uh, mean that it is uninteresting and today even though we cannot we, we are not guaranteed to really find the ring of integers we can get pretty close and I will today discuss the algorithm that I know for getting close to A and I will always assume that we have already some R K that, that has a field of fractions so that is the same as that it should be and spins k as a q vector space so in many cases k is gotten by adjoining some integer to q and take r to be the ring obtained by the break integer z I think it's going I'm still complete with my mic. Hmm? Cutting out. Hmm? The mic's cutting out, so you'll just have to change the other one real quick. You got your five extra minutes. Pardon me? What is the question? I think you got your five extra minutes. I guess this one's not on very loudly either. Okay. <laughs> I guess you got your five extra minutes. Ah, great. Good. Thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little deaf. Anyway, so what was I saying? Okay, so if, you, if your K is gotten, uh, as I said, by adjoining an algebraic integer, you can get R in the same way, but also in the general case when K is just get, got, gotten by a, a basis over Q, then you can, for example, take for R the multiplier ring of the group generated by that basis over Z. So it is always easy to write down, given K, uh, an order of full rank and the question is to enlarge it to OK. And in general that is something that cannot be done as we'll see also today but I will try to explain the theorem to you that tells you that in this there's a sense in which you can get quite close. And let me first explain some very traditional wisdom on this problem which you may know about already and that is that what you do here is that you first compute the discriminant of R and it, we are only caring about its absolute value and that is a number that can be interpreted as the order of a certain finite abelian group R dagger modulo R where R dagger which will play an important role in the algorithms is the polar or the dual of R, the trace dual it is the set of x in k for which the trace and all the traces today are the traces from k 
to Q the trace of the principal ideal generated by X should be contained in the integers. And that is something that is easy to compute. It is an additive subgroup uh, in K. It is finally generated as a group, same rank as R. It contains R, and this group is a finite group and it can all be computed efficiently including its order which is the absolute value of the discriminant. And then it is also the case that this R that is okay that we are looking for is contained in our dagger and in between there is also okay dagger and that leads to a well-known formula namely that the index of R in OK that is a number with the property that if I square it then it is the quotient of the discriminants of R and the discriminant of OK which are integers that happen to have the same sign so I don't put absolute values there. So that is a divisor of this discriminant that I calculated and in fact its square will divide it but this discriminant is in many cases a huge number it will be hard to factor in many cases and it will also be hard to detect square divisors but if somehow you are where you are informed about the prime factorization of this discriminant, then what works quite well is determining the ring of integers in the following way. And the main message here is that finding OK out of R is a local problem. And what I mean by that is the following. You look at this abelian group. That is a finite abelian group which you don't know yet, in fact you are in the process of computing it and as every finite abelian group it is canonically isomorphic to the direct sum of uh, overall primes of the primary part and the primary part those are the elements of OK modulo R which have the property that in this group they have P power order. So if you multiply them with a suitable P power then they end up in R. And that is the same as looking at the ring that you get by adjoining 1 over P to K. This is the set of all elements in K that have the property that multiplied by a suitable p power you end up in r and this is not an order because it is not finally generated as a group but it is a ring and you see also that this is a subring of k and for most prime numbers it will be equal to R. For most prime numbers, this P primary piece of the group will just be zero. The only primes that you have to look at are the primes for which the square, if you like, divides this discriminant. But that is, uh, it's also true if you forget about this. So, as a consequence, you have that this OK is simply, as an abelian group, the sum over these P's of this subring. And computing this subring for a given prime number P is essentially equivalent to solving my problem, finding OK out of R, locally at P. And if the prime factorization P of your discriminant is known, then you reduce it to this problem. It turns out that if you have a prime number P, as we will see later in this lecture, then this ring can be computed in polynomial time. The only thing that prevents you from writing down OK in polynomial time is that you do not know all these prime numbers. So that means 
that we will also be forced to look at rings of the nature R1 over Q intersected with OK, where Q, well, may or may not be a prime number, but it is some big number that you are not able to factor into primes. And this is the type of ring that we will mostly try to determine in this lecture, where Q is a given positive integer. And again, it is a local thing. You can write this as the direct sum over the P's dividing Q prime, of the very same thing that, uh, oh, I forgot to divide out by uh, R, so let's take the sum then, and then you write down the very same ring that we had previously, except, of course, that we don't know which piece to take. At any rate, this is the thing that we will be looking at. It, is, it only depends on the radical of Q, it depends only on the set of primes dividing Q, which is clear from this description. And there are two interesting cases that we will in particular concentrate upon. And that is, first of all, of course, the case that Q is a prime number after all. And secondly, the case that Q is this discriminant of R. And if Q is this discriminant of R, or maybe it's radical, but often we don't know it, then this ring is OK itself because, well, if you take for Q the discriminant of R, then you see that you have this formula. So if you happen to know the radical of this discriminant, then you can compute everything. Radicals of numbers, they are square-free. And square-free numbers, well, they may still not be prime, but at least locally they are prime. If I take any square-free number, then locally at every prime number, dividing it, it is a prime element. And that is good enough for our purposes, and that is why square-free numbers can be so helpful for us. Okay, so that should set the stage for the theorem that I would like to discuss in this lecture. And that is the following. It is a theorem from a paper that I wrote. Uh, I, th I do not know which number we have. I think that we are somewhere near eight. It, it is a paper that I wrote with Johannes Buchmann. And that was published in 1994. And that is actually the best reference for what I'm talking about today. Uh, of course, another good reference is uh, the set of lecture notes, but I believe that not everything that I will be saying today is fully proved yet in the present version of the lecture notes. So here is the theorem. There is a polynomial time algorithm. Let me again abbreviate it to PTA, polynomial time algorithm, that on input a number field K, an order R in K with the property that k is spent by r over q. Let me write that down. So k is the field of fractions of r, if you like, and an integer q that is greater than zero. And you have to think of Q as being a divisor of the discriminant of R, ideally a square-free divisor, but that is something that you may have no information about. 
Then what does the algorithm do? And that is an algorithm that I will tell you about today, how it goes. Then uh, that on input computes an order. A in K and a divisor R of Q, a positive integer. And these, this A and this R have two properties. The first property is that this A is trying to be the ring that we are after. That is this ring, the Q contribution, so to speak, to the ring of integers. And you have to be aware of the fact this is of course sitting in OK. So if you mod out these groups by R, then you have finite abelian groups. And these finite abelian groups are killed by some power of Q, because if you multiply the elements here with suitable powers of Q, you end up in R. So what you like to have, and that is what is expressed by the second property that this A has, what you like is that this is equal. And we can say something about the prime numbers dividing this order. And those prime numbers, because this group is killed by Q, those prime numbers, all of them will certainly divide Q. Okay, so let me tell you what I know about those prime numbers. If P is prime, then P divides the order of this quotient, that quotient measures to which extent by algorithm has really been successful. P divides the index, in other words, of A in this ring that we are after, if and only if P square is a divisor of R. And you should really think of R as some huge number. In many cases, it will be equal to Q itself, or Q with some small prime numbers removed. And you really have no insight into the prime factorization of R. And you do not know whether such primes exist at all. Maybe you can believe they exist. Maybe you have, to, you have tried to make your Q as square-free as you could by, for example, looking for square divisors up to the square of a million or something. So you may think, you may believe that this, these P's don't exist and that you have been completely successful. Now, I should also mention that uh, if this P square divides R, then certainly P divides R. And it so happens that these primes have to be large, at least larger than the degree. Small primes behave in different ways from big primes, as you will see. And somehow the best way of dealing with small primes is that you simply make that you simply compute for small primes at least these rings so that small primes are out of the game. So that is the theorem. And yeah, if you have the belief that, well, take for example Q the discriminant or, or some piece of it that is large enough, uh, divisible by the radical. And uh, suppose that you have found this R and that you somehow have the belief that it is square free, then you have the hope without being able to prove this, that you really found the full ring of integers. Yeah, because if Q is this discriminant, then you have the full ring of integers. But then you may be mistaken and 
maybe by coincidence or because of some intelligent friend tells you about it, you find a square divisor. What you can then simply do is that remove some of the P's that are sitting in Q, maybe leave one uh, sitting there and apply the algorithm again and then your A will be larger and locally at that square of the prime uh, you will find a bigger order. And you can do something similar if you discover a square that uh, you cannot factor, that may not be prime. And, and then you can again use this algorithm to make the order a bit larger. Okay, so what I will do uh, at least is give you the algorithm today that proves this theorem, maybe not give the full proof of the theorem, and I also hope to have time for some examples. Question, yeah. Here? This last, you mean here? Uh, no, I'm here. Uh, uh, yeah. So I just want to be clear, is that saying that P divides R implies P greater than the degree? That's a result of the algorithm? Yeah, so as you will very soon see in the algorithm, we deal with the first primes, separate, the small primes that are at most a degree separately, and as soon as we have dealt with them, remo we remove them completely from our current value of R. And what you should think here is actually something that you are completely familiar with from the case that K over Q is quadratic. If K over Q is quadratic, then you write down a formula for the uh, ring of integers that everybody knows about, but the prime 2 has a special behavior there. And that is because 2 is not bigger than the degree. It is equal to the degree. And that is something that happens for every degree. And that is due to the phenomenon that primes in my order lying over small primes may have the property that they are wildly ramified. You have to define what you mean by wildly ramified in an order, but it has a decent definition and those are the cause of the trouble of the small primes. But the small primes have also merits, not only that you can easily see that they are prime, but also that you can easily find them as factors of numbers. If I have my discriminant, I can do trial division by the primes up to the degree that is trivially in polynomial time and I can just find them and remove them and that is what the algorithm is forced to do. Other questions? Well let me actually tell you what the output of the algorithm is in the quadratic case and I will restrict to giving z, uh, giving r as z square bracket square root a, where a is some integer that is not a square. And the input, uh, well, there's also a k, but k is just q square root a, the field of fractions, and uh, I should also give a q as an input, and I do, well, I look at the discriminant, which is 4a, Maybe I take the absolute value, uh, since I think I wanted Q to be positive, right? Okay, so 4A, and if you follow my advice uh, to make it square free, you may uh, take out some factors of two, but that will happen all by itself, so let's not bother about it. Then I will tell you what the output is, the, what the A is, and what the capital R is, uh, pardon me, uh, 